welcome to this video lecture. I'm Mark Scythian, FAA licensed aerospace technician, airframe, power plant, and avionics certified. The date today is July 1st, 2016. In this video lecture, we are going to cover the true power output of a four-stroke diesel piston engine. Of course, the stroke numbers have nothing to do with the number of cylinders in the engine, but they refer to the stroke cycle events to complete one duty cycle of the engine. On the four-stroke diesel piston engine, the engine operates on heat of air compression, which means the compression ratios on the diesel are substantially higher than they are with the gasoline engine. So the high compression ratios of diesel cause the air temperature to increase to such high temperatures that it's sufficient to ignite the fuel. But with any type of a heat of air compression engine, uh, the type of fuel used is very important. Uh, with heat of air compression engines like diesel, piston, and gas turbine, there has to be an oily, hard to burn, non-volatile fuel such as kerosene, jet fuel for gas turbines, and diesel fuel for diesel piston engines. That is because when you increase the compression of the air much higher than the gasoline, the temperature of course goes up. But then if you use too volatile of a fuel like gasoline, the fuel will explode inside of the chamber instead of burning smoothly. This is called detonation or knock. If you were to put gasoline in a diesel piston engine or a gas turbine engine, the fuel gasoline would not burn. It would explode violently and it would damage the engine parts and most likely cause a, a hole to be popped into the piston of the diesel piston engine. So you can't have a, a, you can't have a fuel that burns too fast. And kerosene and diesel are perfect for heat of air compression because they require a lot of compression or impact to cause their uh, burning to take place efficiently. So the stroke cycles on the four-stroke diesel piston engine are as follows. You have air intake on the downstroke, only air intake, not fuel, only air. And then on the upstroke, the second stroke, you have heat of air compression, the compression ratio on a typical diesel engine is equal or around what it is with the gas turbine engine. It is around 20 to 1 compression ratio. Whereas in a gasoline, the typical compression ratio is around 10 to 1. So when you draw in a charge of air and then the intake valve closes and the piston comes up onto the compression stroke, it's going to squeeze the air 20 times or 20 times greater than atmospheric pressure. What happens is that let's say the intake air temperature was about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It will by the time it goes to the top dead center or almost top dead center, when it hits the end of its compression cycle, the temperature will increase by 800 degrees Fahrenheit just from the compression alone. So the fire triangle says you need oxygen, oxygen, a heat source, and a fuel. These are the three requirements to create combustion or burning a fuel. So on the intake stroke you get the oxygen. Air is 20% oxygen by volume. It's mostly nitrogen but that 20% is drawn in through the air. So you get the oxygen and then you compress that air to 20 to 1. Now you get the heat the temperature goes up by 800 degrees. On initial startup, there will be a glow plug to assist the heating of the air with the compression. And then right before the piston goes to top dead center, instead of a spark coming, there will be fuel injection of the diesel fuel. And so now the third component of combustion is, uh, is implemented into the fire triangle. And then you get the combustion and then right after the piston goes to top dead center and comes down to after top dead center, remember the timing of the fuel, just like the timing of the spark, timing of the fuel delivery, fuel injection, 
will be right before top dead center. And then just that dwell time for a split second is enough for the combustion to engage. And then the piston comes to after top dead center. And then maximum pressure of the combustion exerts on the piston head, driving the piston down into dynamic force, transmitted to the connecting rod, then to the crankshaft via crank pin, converting the brake mean effective pressure from the combustion exerted on the piston head into foot-pounds torque and brake horsepower out to the crankshaft. So since the pressure is so high on the piston head in a four-stroke diesel piston engine, the maximum torque rating is always achieved at very low RPMs. Typical diesel four-stroke piston engines will reach their maximum torque at RPMs as low as 1500 RPM or even lower. So you have the air intake, heat of air compression, fuel delivery, ignition, power, and then exhaust stroke. That's when the intake valve opens up at the end of the power stroke to let the spent fuel charge go out of the engine. So in terms of lubrication, since there's such extreme heats and pressures in the four-stroke diesel piston engine, uh, a lot of times the oil will not stand in the crankcase. It will actually be circulated out of the crankcase to an oil cooler, which is like an oil radiator, so the oil can be cooled and brought back into the crankcase. Uh, this prevents the congealing of the oil under high pressures and temperatures should it stay stagnant, not moving in the crankcase. So a lot of diesel four-stroke piston engines will have an oil cooling system for the oil to actually uh, go through an expansion valve and dissipate some of its heat and come back into the crankcase. And so this is kind of uh, something that was uh, created out of necessity because with all that heat and pressure, just imagine you're compressing air to such high pressures that the air gets so hot it can ignite the diesel fuel. So after the engine lights off, uh, the glow plug is no longer needed. So every start of the duty cycle, air is drawn in. A lot of times there'll be a blower or you know even a turbocharger added to the uh, to the exhaust to drive an air pump to force air in. But a lot of times they'll just be fans or uh, engine driven, something like a supercharger, engine driven pump, air pump to draw the airflow in. So you can pack as much airflow into the engine cylinders under atmospheric pressure. So without a supercharger or turbocharger, you're not getting maximum airflow into the cylinder because you're relying only on atmospheric pressure to do so. So that volumetric efficiency is about 80%. But the idea is, is you're getting air intake only, heat of air compression, fuel delivery, ignition, and then power, and then exhaust. And so that's how the four-stroke diesel piston engine operates. Now in terms of power, true power output, remember you can't use the horsepower rating. You got to use the brake horsepower rating because HP is the indicated horsepower and that is the total power involved including the power lost to keep the engine running and as well as the power that you are left over with that's usable at the crankshaft, the brake horsepower. So you have to use the BHP and you can't use the IHP because that includes the BHP plus the friction horsepower, the power loss to keep the engine running, taken from the heat energy trapped in the fuel. So in order to do so, just like with the four-stroke gasoline piston engine, you take the foot-pound torque rating at the given RPM, divide it by the cubic inch displacement, multiply it times 150.8. From there, you calculate the brake mean effective pressure in pounds per square inch, exerted on the piston head during each power stroke. Then you multiply that times the piston stroke length in feet. You take that from the bore and stroke rating, divide the piston stroke inches into feet, divide it into 12 to get the feet. Then multiply it times the piston head area in square inches. So bore diameter divided by two squared times pi, 3.14. You get the square inches surface head area of the piston. Then multiply it times the number of power strokes per minute so use the maximum foot-pounds torque rating RPM and divide that RPM by 2 because there are two 
rotations of the crankshaft for every one power stroke. So whatever that is, divide that by two, the RPM, and then you'll get the power strokes per minute on a four-stroke diesel piston engine. Then multiply those four times the number of cylinders. Then take those five multiplied values out and divide it by 33,000, the number of foot-pounds per minute to one horsepower. And then you will get the accurate brake horsepower output of a four-stroke diesel piston engine. In terms of the heat energy content in diesel fuel, that would be 19,300 BTU per pound with a fuel density of 7.1 pounds per one U.S. gallon. So overall, per U.S. gallon, there is more heat energy content in diesel compared to gasoline. But per pound, there's slightly less energy in diesel fuel compared to gasoline. 20,000 BTU per pound is the heat energy content of gasoline. So the flame front speed is going to be a lot lower in the diesel, and it's also going to be less volatile in the diesel compared to the gasoline, because you don't want volatile fuel igniting in such high compression ratios, because it will lead to an explosion, not a smooth burn. Uh, same is true in any other heat of air compression engine like the gas turbine engine. So the uh, amount of heat energy in the diesel fuel has uh, a lot to do with octane. And octane does not increase the amount of energy in the fuel, but it slows down the speed of the flame front during combustion so that it won't explode. So in higher compression engines, you're going to want to use higher octane so it slows down the speed of the burn. In lower compression engines, you're going to want to use a lower octane because you want the uh, fuel to burn faster since there's less compression. So nowadays on new cars, especially gasoline piston engines, they have anti-knock sensing. So you can get away using the wrong octane, especially too low octane and higher compression engines. It will bleed some of that exhaust gas back into the cylinder through the EGR valve and allow for a stabilization of the flame front. This is done electronically, but you know, on cars about 10 years ago or more, if you had a high compression ratio and you used too low an octane, uh, the uh, fuel would burn too fast and then you would get an explosion of the fuel called detonation or knock. So you had to increase the octane, which slows the speed of the burn down under higher compression and then it burns smoothly. But anyway, the octane is kind of dominant in the uh, non-gasoline piston engines like diesel and, and kerosene, jet fuel-powered gas turbines. Because with all that heat and pressure, you don't want the fuel to get too volatile and burn too fast, right? And a gasoline is so volatile that in open air, it readily goes from liquid into gas, right, in open air. So you can't use that in heat of air compression. No way you're going to cause an explosion in the engine and damage or destroy the engine. So uh, lastly, the thermal efficiency in a four-stroke uh, diesel piston engine can start around 30%. It's a lot higher than the gasoline uh, under no load operation. Again, it's 38% uh, to move the piston, and then uh, everything else is lost to heat the engine block and uh, waste heat out the exhaust. But when you put it under a load, you probably run about 30% thermally efficient. So there's actually more uh, thermal efficiency in the diesel because of the heat of air compression. And some diesel engine manufacturers, they will actually have computer-controlled air-fuel ratio and cam timing to the point where you could start out around 16 or 17 to 1 air-fuel ratio and climb as much as 100 to 1 air-fuel ratio. So diesel is a whole different ballgame with fuel delivery systems. Uh, in terms of the um, uh, total uh, torque output, that's going to be very high at very low. It's going to be very high torque at very low RPM with a four-stroke gasoline piston engine. And when you use the right transmission system, uh, you can get into some seriously high speeds with a four-stroke diesel piston engine uh, carrying very high payload. But when you're carrying a lot of payload, you're going to want maximum torque at minimum RPM. Uh, that's where diesels are so useful for big rig semis 
and for light trucks towing high payload capacities because at very, very low RPM, there's a lot of torque. So you can get that vehicle moving with a lot of towing payload. But the thing is, it's not RPM dominant. So all you need is a good transmission system with high gearing because you already have the torque to rotate high gears at very low RPM. And so, you know, it will take a little more shifting or upshifting to get up the speed, but you could be at high gear on a diesel transmission at very, very low RPM, very high vehicle speeds, but it takes a little time to get up into speed. So uh, in terms of racing and speed, quick speed, the diesel is not RPM dominant, but it is torque dominant. So if you have to take like 20,000 pounds of payload and start moving it, you can do it very effortless, effortless, effortlessly with a diesel because it goes to maximum torque at minimum RPM. Like uh, 1,450 RPM, you might be at 800 foot-pounds of torque with a large enough diesel four-stroke piston engine, right? So now, if you have the right gearing system, you can upshift. And even at the highest gear for going over 100 miles per hour, the RPM is very low because you got the torque to drive a very high gearing at very low RPM. So that's the dynamics of the four-stroke diesel piston engine. And again, for every one BTU per minute heat energy you release in the form of burning fuel, that will be equal to 17.6 watts of mechanical power. There's 746 watts of power to one horsepower, which is equal to 550 foot-pounds per second. And it is also equal to 33,000 foot-pounds per minute, which is 550 foot-pounds per second times 60 seconds. So that's the ins and outs of the diesel four-stroke piston engine. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.